Today we're in the microbiology lab. One of the major functions of the microbiology lab is to identify um, microorganisms, particularly bacteria. Now, this is really important because most clinicians want to know as quickly as possible what is causing an infection in one of their patients. And the microbiology lab can identify bacteria in primary clinical specimens or from purified cultures. A primary clinical specimen would be something like a sputum culture. A person has a high fever, is coughing, and coughs up a thick loogie, which is a chunk of mucus and debris and whatnot. And the microbiology lab will do some special techniques to see if they can see any bacteria in that specimen. A purified culture would be in a situation where someone has drawn a blood culture, they may have taken an aliquot of blood, and see if they can, any bacteria will grow in that. And then from a pure culture, try to identify the organism. Now, as you know, my, the bacteria on our body are tiny. We can't see them with the naked eye. And even using ordinary light microscopy, we cannot see the bacteria. So we have to devise some sort of technique that we can make these bacteria visible. Now, the technique we're going to explore today was actually devised in the late 19th century by a Scandinavian scientist by the name of Dr. Graham. And basically, he recognized that by doing sequential staining of bacteria, he could lump bacteria into two major categories, those that stain blue and those that stain pink. Additionally, the power of this technique is that not only can you tell the color of the bacteria, but you can also look at the morphology, or the shape of the bacteria, to give us some idea of what's actually uh, growing in that specimen. Now here to walk us through that is Heidi. Heidi is an experienced technologist at the UHC laboratory, and she's going to show us the technique of doing the gram stain, which is a fundamental staining technique that all of you are going to be uh, need to be acquainted with and will be used extensively in microbiology laboratories around the world. Okay. Heidi, you want to walk us through? Sure. The first stain that we put on is called crystal violet. Now what are you doing? What's that doing now? This is the initial stain. So the initial stain that we're going to use is a crystal violet. Um, this slide here is a heat fixed slide of organism. We place the crystal violet onto the slide for 10 to 60 seconds. Uh, it stains all of the um, stuff that's on the slide. So it will stain cells, it will stain bacteria, and any debris such as protein that could be on the slide? Correct. Right. Uh, after the time, we rinse it off with water. Then we're going to counter stain, or we're going to use Graham's iodine, which will complex the crystal violet. Well, that stays on for 10 to 60 seconds also. We rinse with water. And then we decolorize with an alcohol. We use acetone for two to three seconds. This is an important step for uh, removing excess crystal violet that is on the stain, on the slide. And also, it's a really important step because it's one of the fundamental characters to determine whether an organism will turn blue or turn pink. And since that thick-walled bacteria that turn out to be gram-positive retain that complex crystal violet stain in their thick cell wall. If you don't have a thick cell wall, what will happen is that when you put that acetone on, you'll actually remove the stain from the bacterial cell wall. And so that doesn't have any stain right now. And now what we do is we put on the counter stain, the safranin, so that we can now stain anything that happened to be decolorized on the slide or that had not already taken up the stain. And this also stays on for 10 to 60 seconds and then can be rinsed away. And then we dry it. And now we can look at it under the microscope and see if we can identify any organisms. This is the fundamental of the Gram stain. It's been around for 125 years. Still an amazingly powerful tool and the backbone of the clinical microbiology laboratory.